Hi viewers, this is Doc Mountain. I welcome you to my YouTube channel. In our video today, we are going to solve two problems which were derived from last year's paper, Mathematics Paper 2 for GCE candidates. So now, this one is actually a parabola. That one is a time graph. So now, in the first problem, they want us to find the coordinates of the point C and point A. So now, A and C are x-intercepts. X-intercepts are simply the points at which the graph touches the x-axis. So now, how do you determine that? Uh, so now, for you to determine the x-intercepts, you have to make use of the quadratic function or the equation that you've been given, which they had used to draw the parabola. So now, the, the function is that one, which is y is equal to 3 minus 2x minus x squared. So now, when you look at it, it's, it hasn't been written in standard form, so you have to rewrite it so that it happens to be in standard form. So now, the standard form of a quadratic equation looks like this, or a quadratic function, a quadratic equation. Uh, that is ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b, and c are constants. So now when we compare what we have here and what we have outside, you will take note of one thing and that's uh, that the terms are not arranged the way they ought to be. So we have to rearrange this. When you change the positions of these terms, their, their signs won't change. So we will have y is equal to negative x squared minus 2x plus Three. Okay, so now, since it's in a standard format, we can now resolve the, the roots of the same function. So now, how do you do that? Let's make use of the formula. We say x is equal to negative b plus or minus the root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. So that from this function, we will need to identify a, b, and c. So we need to say a is equal to the, the coefficient of this first term is actually negative 1. And then b is actually related to that. So b is equal to the coefficient here is negative 2. Don't you forget to consider the signs. They are very important. Then c is actually a 3. After identified, after having identified a, b, and c, we can plug them into the equation. So say x is equal to negative. There's a negative in the formula. And here is a negative, so we will need to put that in the brackets, plus or minus. That is b squared, which is negative 2, in bracket squared, minus 4, a, that's negative 1, and then c is actually a 3. 2 times negative 1. Uh, so now let's resolve everything. So that would be x is equal to, this will actually become positive 2 plus or minus. This negative 2 squared, that is negative 2 times negative 2, which will equal to 4. The negative times negative as positive times positive as positive. Then 4 times 1 times 3 that's actually a 12 over 2 times negative 1, that's negative 2. 
And so now I will write the answers somewhere here or somewhere here. Okay, so now we will have x, which is equal to a 2 here, plus or minus. Then when we add what's on the inside of the root symbol, that will be x16 over negative 2. So x is equal to, don't you make a mistake of writing this one on the inside there. This one is actually separated by the line. So that will be 2 plus or minus. The root of 16 is actually a 4 over negative 2. We can separate these because they have, they will have, they, 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 there is a positive and negative here, a minus and a plus. So that will be x. We pick the operation plus. That is, is equal to. 2 plus 4 over negative 2 or x is equal to 2 minus 4 over negative 2. So x will equal to when we subtract a 2 from a 4 that will be negative 2 over negative 2. This negative and that negative will cancel 2 into 2 that's 1. So x is equal to 1 and then how about this one? This one will give us, it's this one here. So x is equal to 2 plus 4, that's a 6, over negative 2. Negative 2 into 6, that would be negative 3. So the roots of, the roots of this quadratic function are x is equal to negative 3 and x is equal to positive 1. So now, we can now tell this zero actually separates the two sets of integers. On the right side, there are positive integers, and on the left, the negative integers. So if this one is negative, then definitely point A is falling on negative 3, and point C is actually falling on a 1. So we have actually determined the coordinates of the points A, C. So if we can bring in the Y coordinates, because we're not moving an inch going upwards or downwards, so that would be 3.0, and then this is 1.0. So we have resolved the roots of the function, and we have found the coordinates of A and C. Let's move on to number two. It's saying determine the turning point of the graph. So now the turning point is actually the, the point at which if we draw a line, it will actually separate the parts, the two parts of the parabola into two halves. So now how do you determine that? So it may be somewhere here, it may be the somewhere there, it may be somewhere here. We don't know the coordinates. Now, how do you determine them? Remember, it will have two coordinates, the x and y coordinates. So now for you to determine the x coordinate, we use the formula negative b over 2a. Uh, so <clears throat> we are going to say x is equal to negative b there, and then 2 times a. But we need to have this one in standard form. Sorry, I actually erased what I had written here. Negative x squared minus 2x plus 3. This one is actually a b. That one is actually a in front here. And then that one is a c. So now what's the value of b? That's negative 2. And then what's the value of A? That's negative 1. So negative times negative, that's positive 2. And 2 times negative 1, that's negative 2, which is equal to negative 1. So the x coordinate is equal to negative 1. How about the y coordinate? Now, for you to determine the y coordinate of a turning point, you make use of this equation. 
or y is equal to, you simply pick the equation that you've been given, but it should be written in standard form. That is a negative x squared minus 2x plus 3. Let's plug in the value of x. So whether it's x, we're going to bring in the value of x that we just determined. So y is equal to negative, that's negative 1 squared minus 2 negative 1 plus 3. So y is equal to, this one first of all has to be expanded. That's negative 1 times negative 1, which gives us 1. So we will have a negative times 1 there. Then negative 2 times negative 1, that's uh, plus 2 plus 3. So y is equal to, this will be negative 1 plus 2 plus 3, that's 5. So y is equal to 4. So the turning point is actually at negative 1, comma, 4. So we have actually determined the turning point of the parabola. Let's move on to the second problem that has to do with uh, the time graph. Okay, so now, if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, please go ahead and do so, so that you're able to trace this channel. Whenever I post a video, you happen to be enlightened. Okay. So now, they say, the following diagram is the speed time graph of a car. Calculate the acceleration of the car during the first, the first five seconds. So now, the horizontal line is actually denoting time. Then the vertical line is denoting speed, which is measured in meters. And so time is in seconds. And they say calculate the acceleration of the car during the first five seconds. So now what you need to know is that acceleration is given by final velocity minus initial velocity over the total time taken. So now we can collect data here. What's the final velocity? Okay, the, the, what's the final velocity of final speed? That's 20. And then the initial speed is actually a zero, which is equal to zero. And then the total time, that's within five seconds. So time is equal to five. We plug in the values, say acceleration is equal to final velocity, that's 20 minus zero over 5. So acceleration is equal to 20 over 5, which is equal to 4. But I need to know the units. Acceleration is measured in meters per second squared. So we're done with number 1, and it's allocated to max. Let's move on to the second problem. The same, find the value of t, given that the total distance traveled was 550. So here, I'm going to write data, then we say total time is equal to, we don't know, and then the total distance is actually 550 meters. So now what you need to know is that for you to determine the distance under speed time graph, you need to consider the shape that you have. So now what we have here is actually a trapezium. So now, what's the, what's the formula for determining area under a trapezium? So when you're looking at a speed time graph, when you actually de determine the area of the shape under that speed time graph, then you would determine the total distance, or depending on the kind of the graph you're looking at. If it's in physics, you're looking at the velocity time graph, then definitely. When you determine the area, then you are determining displacement. Uh, so now, have that having been said, let's bring in the formula for determining area under the shell. We say area is given by half A plus B times H. So now, this A is the shorter side of the trapezium, and then this B is the longer side of the trapezium. These are the sides that are parallel to each other. Then height is actually 
this one here. Uh, so now we can say h is equal to 20, that's the one which is the height. Then a, that is the distance from here to there. So from here to, the, to there is 5, then from here to there is 25. So 25 minus 5, that's actually 20. And then b is the one that we are determining, which is termed as t. So we don't know its value. So now with what we have, let's plug in the values. So d is actually the area, which is 550. It is equal to half. What is a? A is a 20 plus B, which is T. We don't know its value. Then H is actually 20. And from here, we say 550 is equal to, uh, to simplify things, multiply this 20 by that, which is half. So half of 20 is actually a 10. Then we have a 20 plus T on the inside. We can expand the brackets by multiplying what's on the outside by what's on the inside. 10 times 20, that's actually 200 plus 10 times t, that's 10t, and we have 550 here. So now what we have is an equation, a linear equation in one unknown variable. How do you determine the value of t? Move this one on this side. So we are adding the additive inverse of 200 on both sides of the equation. So minus 200, even this side minus 200. So 200 minus 200, that will be zero. So we will remain with 10 T this side. And then 550 minus 200, that will be 350. Our interest is to determine T. So we get rid of T by multiplying both sides by the inverse of a 10. So this 10 and that 10 will go. We have a T, a zero and zero will cancel. So the total time here is actually 35. That's the one we have found. So we can say, therefore, time is equal to 35. Let's move on to the last one, which says, uh, calculate the average speed. So now, average speed is actually given by total distance over total time taken. So average speed, check out I was writing here, is equal to What's the total distance? The total distance is the one that we've been given here, which is 550 over total time. So total time is the one that we're just from resolving, so that's 35. So average speed is equal to, the question is how many times does 35 divide into 55? If you don't have a calculator hand, you don't need to worry. Divide a small number that you can divide in there. So that's a five into, 35, that's 7, 5 there, 1, 5 there, 1, 5 there, 0. So we have 110 over 7. We can divide a 7 in there. So that is 7 into 11. That's 1. Remainder, 4. Remainder, 4. So now how many times does uh, 7 divide into 40. So now, when you do the division pretty well, you simply punch your calculator, you're going to have 15.71. And then you need to know that average speed is measured in meters per second. Well, so that's how we go about these things, friends. Thank you so much for watching. Stay blessed.